would like to welcome everyone to the September 9th meeting of the Corsicana ISD Board of Trustees. This is a regu regularly scheduled workshop and all items that will be discussed have been duly posted. While this is a meeting in public, it's not a meeting of the public. If you wish to speak, please register in the lobby for audience for guests and follow the instructions on the speaker form. The board's role is to set goals, approve personnel and budget, make policy, and provide oversight. We are not here to solve or manage individual problems. Management is the responsibility of the superintendent. As a board, we believe we must educate every child, give every child the greatest opportunity to learn, and to provide a safe and secure environment mentally, physically, emotionally, and academically. And these are our core values. We thank you for your interest in the students of CISD. The first item on our agenda is uh, to call order and determine a quorum. We have all members here except Kathy Branch, so we do have a quorum. Next item on the agenda is audience for guests. Okay. So we can move audience for guests after the superintendent's report? Okay. So next we'll do the super superintendent's report. Thank you. Saturday, we had a wonderful uh, Corsicana Education Foundation Gala. This year's theme was Havana Nights. And from the food to the band to the dancing, it was a great night for raising money for staff and students of Corsicana ISD. Many kudos to Casey Gordon and her board and the volunteers. We appreciate everything that the foundation does for our school district. You do not want to miss Friday night's football game. This is the 40th anniversary of our CHS Calico dance team. Uh, Friday we'll have about 150 alumni who are scheduled to perform during halftime with our current Calico. So that should be a lot of fun. They're, I know they've been practicing. Um, it's also elementary night with the campuses competing to see who can bring the most students to the game. And in between the first and second quarters, the fastest fourth grader at each campus is going to race so we can truly find out who the fastest fourth grade boy or girl or both, in Corsicana ISD is. It's going to be a great night. Kickoff versus Hallsville is at 7 p.m. Also on Friday night, our volleyball teams open district play. The Lady Tigers will be visiting Middle Lothian Heritage, and sub-varsity action starts at 7. So thank you to those traveling and supporting our volleyball teams. And then this Wednesday, our CHS Choir will be performing at the City of Corsicana Annual 9-11 Memorial Ceremony. We're honored that our choir has been asked to perform, and we hope the community comes out to support them as well as remember 9-11. The event is scheduled to start at 10 a.m. Okay, thank you. thank you. Do we have an audience for guests? Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. John Gabano, if you come up. And I'm going to read the audience for guests um, comment. The CSD Board of Trustees encourages comments about the district from citizens of the district, from district employees, or from other members of the public. Anyone wishing to speak may do so at this time. The board asks that each participant's comments pertain to public education and be no longer than three minutes per person. The board also respectfully requests that the speaker refrain from mentioning other students or parents and staff members names when addressing their concerns. Under the Texas Open Meetings Act, the board is not permitted to discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on the agenda for tonight's meeting. This means that the board members are unable to deliberate, ask questions, provide you with a response, or take any action relating to your comments. If an issue mentioned is listed on tonight's agenda, the board's deliberation of the issue will be deferred until the appropriate time during the meeting. In addition, the board has adopted a complaint policy that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. Complaints brought by employees, students, or parents may be brought in accordance with our local school board policy. Each of these processes provide that if a resolution cannot be achieved administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as a properly posted agenda item. 
Copies of our district's policy on public participation in meetings and filing complaints can be found on our website. If you need assistance with these policies or processes, please call Merrill Harrison in the superintendent's office. So you will get three minutes. Uh, Mr. Farmer will time you, and then he'll give you a one-minute uh, notice once we get there. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Uh, good evening. My name is John Cabano. Uh, my stepson uh, goes to the CISD over at the high school, 10th grader. My kids went to school here. Uh, I was, I'm retired law enforcement here in Avera County, spent my whole entire career here. One of the things that I heard was uh, the law enforcement for the school district not taking or allowed to take their cars home. Uh, if y'all would oblige me, uh, write these words down, uh, if you would. Uh, it's not what if, but when. If y'all could write that down. It's not what if, but when. And what I mean by that, I've worked all over the state of Texas in law enforcement, and one of the things we had in our meetings is it's not what if, but when. Uh, and what I mean by that is if your law enforcement for the school district is not prepared by having their vehicles, which the vehicles have the tools that they need, per se we call them our lunchbox, our toolbox, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, my understanding is they have to keep the cars uh, at the school, but in doing so, they have to take their weapons out of the car, patrol car, and put them in a personal car. So it's not what if, when an accidental shooting might happen while pulling their weapons out of the vehicle and putting it into another vehicle, and vice versa when they come back to work. Uh, the other thing is if something happens in the school district, it's not what if, but when something happens, but they don't have their patrol car with them, uh, and they have to go to the school to get their car versus going straight to the situation. So uh, I just asked the board to reconsider uh, uh, this thought uh, process of uh, having the vehicles remain at the school. You have one minute. Yes, sir. Leaving the vehicles at school. Uh, I believe the officers need to take their vehicles home. I took my vehicle home for 26 years uh, to save money. I understand that. I truly do understand that. Uh, but I'd like you to, to think about uh, officers being always ready and alert and having their tools. My main concern is the guns in and out of the vehicles. Uh, there have been accidental shootings across the state by doing that. Uh, and then also not at the ready and, and meaning they need to be in their patrol cars if something happens at Carroll or something happens at the high school or versus I got to go get my car first. So uh, it's not what if, it's when. Okay? So that's it. Thank you. All right. All right. Next item on the agenda is discussion action items. And first is the special education update. Ms. Howe, Madam President, members of the board, thank you for letting me speak tonight. Um, so we're just going to kind of look at really quickly, just kind of, it's almost like the state of the state and then specifically into Corsicana ISD, just some data, just some new initiatives coming in to kind of address these trends that we're seeing. Um, and so we'll st start. Okay, so this information is um, state-based. So you can look at 24 uh, or 2014 to 2015 and then over into the current year and you'll see a 72 percent increase in special education students um, which is shocking right that is a that is a huge number if you were around at at a in previous years from 2004 to 2017 the state of texas had like an eight percent cap i don't know if some of y'all remember that um, which certainly was found to be inequitable um, and so that was removed so you see the jump there um, and then of course throughout all of the data you'll see COVID show up okay um, but you see the increase um, over those year spans to where we see a 72 percent increase in special education students across the state um, this graph shows how it continues to increase in the identification which we'll look at Corsicana ISD specifically 
but you can see on the orange line that that's just the student population within Texas. So it's remained fairly consistent. I mean, our state grows, but it's nothing shocking. Uh, but you can look at the increase in special education students. Now you do see COVID there, right there in that drop. But, but as you can see it climb, um, that differential just continues to increase and increase. Um, this is special education and Section 504. If you're unfamiliar with Section 504, that means I have a disability that, that affects a major life activity or it substantially limits is, the, is kind of the, the term, uh, a major life activity. So I get to have com accommodations, but there's not specialized instruction, but we do have plans, meetings are required. Um, you can see the difference now that almost, um, I mean, you can almost see like a 10% increase you could see of those combined two where we're really, really close to a fourth. Okay, that, that's, that's a pretty big jump. Um, this is total evals. Now, some people say, well, what's the difference in a student coming in and an evaluation? So when a student comes in, we have certain timeline requirements that are required. It's where our DIAGs come in. They have full testing for that student for a full individualized initial evaluation. Um, and you can see the increase there. Uh, last, the last, that would have been two years ago uh, because we're pulling that data from last year now. Um, I will tell you that last year we had the highest amount of evals that we've had in years. Um, so much so that it, it was difficult to get um, all of them done so we contracted out, like we had to get additional resources and things like that because there are so many. Um, that's kind of contributed to two different things. One, the alleviation of the kind of asinine 8% uh, cap, which again was inequitable, but uh, but also to the per, like to the not broadcasting of, but the empowering of parents of being knowledgeable about special education and hey, you can ask for a referral and we will check this out and and come and if you have a suspected disability that is child fine, come talk to us so that we can get services in a lot earlier, which is great. Uh, but you do see the increase there. Um, so dyslexia. Dyslexia has been a hot button topic for our, the last probably about four years. Um, it has made a full swing over under um, special education. Uh, the reason that is because the federal government kind of came into the state of Texas and said, yeah, you're not identifying dyslexic students appropriately. Um, we need to see a full picture for them. We need to see where they're struggling. Could it be something else? And it's looking like dyslexia. We really need to see what this looks like. So you'll see in the coming numbers an increase in, um, it'll say SLD, specific learning disability. Um, you'll see, like on our side, you'll see a, a very, a very large increase, but that is because dyslexia is now housed under that, where in previous years it was really more housed under 504. This year is the first year no students can be served in dyslexia therapy outside of special ed. Okay, so once they complete therapy, if they're good to go, they don't need any more specialized instruction, then they can move back to 504. Um, as a dyslexic, I can say that you have it your entire life. It is what it is, but you learn those coping skills and then you move through that. Um, so you can still stay under 504 if you wish and get those accommodations. So um, you'll see the dyslexia under 504 in green, but once again, you see the big increase. It's moving up, moving up. So this is also dyslexia. Um, you will see this big sped increase where it's almost 50%. Okay, so this is eligibilities. Um, so under special education, we qualify under 13 eligibilities. Um, and so this is statewide. We'll look at Corsicana in just a second, uh, but you see the increase there under SLD or specific learning disability, um, that that is on the rise. Now we of course have our own trends, right? Like we, we look at the statewide trends to try to plan, try to create some initiatives to curb some things, be proactive, but Corsicana ISD, we have our own different struggles, different proportions of students. You know, we wanna make sure we're, we're being appropriate to Course of Canada too. So our numbers look a little bit different than that, but the trends on the whole are, are fairly similar. Um, autism, you will see a big increase with Course of Canada and we see that uh, statewide as well. Okay, um, the state of Texas prides itself in this, um, in this statistic, um, we focus very intently, it's one of the assurances that we read in every single ARD um, that students will be educated with their same age peers as much as possible. We want inclusion, we want them in least restrictive. Um, so you will see the national average there in dark blue and then us as far as the, the rate of students in general education, special education, special education students in general education classrooms, um, which is great. 
These, uh, the next two slides are just testing results, so reading and then there will be math. Um, we know that just kind of statistically and over longevity, there or longitudinal data shows that, you know, special education students are performing below their same age peers, um, which is not ideal. The point of special education is that we are intervening, we are, we are putting in specialized instruction so that they are meeting at the same level as everything else. If we, are, if we are intervening appropriately, we're addressing need and so they are being successful. But across the state of Texas, we're just not seeing that happen. So like within Corsicana, so uh, we, we've tried to be innovative and be proactive in that in addressing those needs, especially on our instruction side. That would be Mr. Haley. Um, if you know him, he is great. Um, and then there is math. So you will see math is, is again, you see that big differential. You see the increase of economically disadvantaged students, which is something that we focus on heavily in Corsicana. Um, but you do see that kind of steady track of special education students performing at that differential. Okay, so Corsicana specifically, this is in 2020. So I use the same date on each one of these slides to see kind of where we were at um, in September of 2020 and then where we are today. So this just kind of, just kind of get this in your mind of four years ago, we were serving 445 students. That is by eligibility and by campus. Um, some of you might say, well, why are there private schools on here? So part of our proportionate share agreement under IDEA for federal funds is that we also serve, um, or we have proportionate share arrangements essentially for certain services for, for students that are either homeschooled or, or parent uh, placed into private schools. Um, and then we are also held by child fund to of course evaluate students. So. Um, and we want, we want to know that because then we can really address instruction. So this is four years ago, and this is today. So 1,367 of our students are now served by special education. Again, you can see that big uptick in certain um, eligibilities, and then across certain campuses. That's information that we use to really dive down deep into that data and figure out if we can see some trends, what's going on, what's going on at certain elementaries, is it something that we can address? Is there a, a new initiative that we can put into place? Uh, but on the whole, you just see a huge rise in need. So this is eligibility increase. Um, so you can see the two connected together from 2020 and 2024. But on the, what I would like you to bring your attention to is on the percentage increase. So you see that big SLD percentage over 400% increase. Um, everything is over 100. I think the lowest was 120% increase. You see, a, you see a large um, uptick in autism, which we knew, right? We said that with the state. But within Corsicana ISD, one that we see a large, large percentage increase to is emotional disability. In years past, it was called an emotional disturbance. That's changed this year, which is good. Um, we shouldn't use that term. So um, it's an emotional disability. Um, that's where we, um, that could be anything from, so under that, under that label, there could be anything from, I don't react really appropriately to normal situations, like my reaction in normal situations is different than my same age peers, all the way to I have really big behaviors. So um, you can see the, the biggest increase from that. So, um, and then just something to kind of bring attention to is over 1,400 ARDs were processed last year. That is a ton of ARDs. Um, so an ARD is that meeting that happens every year um, for our special ed students that, that says, hey, this is a good plan, let's look at this plan, how are they doing, let's look at those present levels, let's build some good goals, let's establish services based on those goals. Um, and then anytime a parent or our staff says, hey, we all need to come together. We need to come together and evaluate this plan, see if we need to make some adjustments. Um, and they all have to be processed through the DIAGs and the clerks and all of the paperwork. And so over 1,400 was processed last year. It's pretty impressive, our clerks are amazing. Um, but it shows to the need, right, to that continual update of our students. So some initiatives to address those things. This is just a, a quick graphic of not specific to SPED, this is all students, um, but we confirm the impact of student attendance on educational achievement. So course failures were attributed to 67% of the reason, so the reason I failed a course, 67% is attendance. Okay, so of course on the special ed side, I liken that into, hey, you're not getting your services, we can't specialize things if you're not here, right? So on our gen ed side, it's, hey, you're out of class, you're, you don't know what's going on. And we all know the funding that's connected to all of those things, right? Um, and so there's a lot of different things that attendance touches. And so um, one thing that the district has, has um, 
put into place, and you've heard about it a little bit, Mr. K spoke about it, Ms. Howell spoke about it, is we've, we're partnering with school status to really take a proactive approach um, to attendance and a positive approach to attendance. So yes, do they send out our tardy letters and we have that excessive um, excused absence letter and things like that? Yes, that's kind of more of the, hey, you were absent, let's get you to school, but also really taking a positive approach and really incentivizing attendance. Hey, it's a great thing to be here. Attendance is important. We need you, he you here to get those services. Um, and so that is a, that's gonna be a great, we're excited uh, to start that. That rolls out most likely next week. Um, we're kind of finishing up some coding in the connection to, it talks to Skyward. And anytime two softwares talk to each other, takes a minute, right, technology. Uh, but anything from parent letters, social media posts, one thing that we're really excited about is, is they talk with Ms. Howell and she puts her um, kind of impact statement on attendance and then that letter goes out to all of our parents. Um, and so just really creating that attendance in our mind, it's important for my student to be here. What we have found since COVID was that the priority for attendance has just started to wane away um, from parents. It's like, eh, you know, it'll be okay. Uh, when in reality, no, one day lost is a, is a problem. We need you in school. So that's one initiative. The second is definitely innovative. Um, if you think about what innovative kind of means at its core, uh, because it's somewhat AI generated partnered with clinicians. So one of the trends that you saw was our extensive growth in ED eligibility, so emotional disability, right? Um, one way that we can address that for everybody, kind of curbing that, an effort that we want to put before they get into special education, right? If we can address this before it becomes a mountain, if we can address it at the molehill, then, then that's better for kids. And so this is alongside, it will be implemented in our um, intermediate, middle, and high school. It is quite literally an app where they are able to have discussion. There is a ton of background that happens on, on monitoring and running algorithms and making sure if a student is in crisis or in need that we're addressing those things. But it is certainly a, a proactive way to address that. Everything from if I said, um, oh my gosh, I'm so mad at my brother today. Um, I'm just so angry and then it responds back with, okay, well, let's take a few breaths and it counts you down with like a cool graphic and then says, well, why are you mad? Well, he took the front seat, right? And so, which is a daily fight at my house. So, uh, but, then it, but then it goes to, um, okay, well, maybe next time we can try this. So not only does it kind of address that cooling down and assessing kind of what's wrong, but it also gives them proactive strategies to try in the future um, and it is, research-based and connected to um, clinician um, lessons. So that's great. So one of the statistics that they predict based on their research that they have with other districts, um, there's other districts that are using it, Irving is using it at one of their middle school campuses, um, that so not seeing a counselor will get mental health support that they need. So this is the kiddo that does not want to talk to anybody. I don't want to go to a counselor. I don't want anybody to see me. I don't, look, don't talk about this, but they'll communicate with that over 1,100 plus students, and then 70 students that will be in crisis that we can address. The kiddo that I am in a bad place, maybe I'm having ideation, maybe I'm self-harming, um, but, but I don't wanna tell anybody that this can connect to. So, so we're excited about kind of that proactive approach, trying to curb this data. Um, and then these, the next two are just for fun. Um, so Java Jungle, you heard about, we are getting ready. Uh, they train tomorrow. Um, and that is what the trailer currently looks like. Um, and so we are super excited about it. Um, that is our 18 plus transition program that will be running a coffee trailer for us. Um, and so when they finish all their training, we look forward to having it at campuses during lunchtime um, for teachers or um, and then potentially at maybe even some football games or something like that. So we're excited about that. They can earn a lot of um, really good life skills, but also a little money. So, And then, of course, December is, is Willy Wonka for Penguin. So that's just so you get it on your books. We're excited about that. But any questions kind of just over the data or anything like that? So looking, looking at the data and how things have doubled, um, like speech, the, the kids yes. with um, in speech, um, and the and the other ones that have doubled. Have we been able to adjust our? Because I know we have speech therapists. Sure. So it looks sure. like their caseload is doubled. Yes. So that's been a something. Um, it is very difficult to find um, 
SLPs. And so we went to work this summer um, and Mr. Doring and I were able to kind of create some pretty good incentives for retention or for um, attracting people and we got somebody who is outstanding. Um, she actually came from a different state but was moving in the area and we jumped on it. So we actually added an SLP this year. Um, and so what we basically were able to say was the amount that we were having to contract out, uh, we could balance with somebody that was dedicated to our district. And so uh, didn't have to increase funds really at all. Now I will also say this, uh, we have two maternity leaves in speech right now, uh, which is makes us all run crazy, but we've been able to contract with another SLP within uh, our community. So again, trying to keep it local, we really wanna support people around us so that they support us. Um, and so we're able to cover all of those students' minutes. So students aren't, aren't out of it at all, but it is, I will say that speech is something that is growing um, in our area. Um, it connects to a lot of different things when you connect into poverty rates and um, just kind of the way homes are functioning and built and kind of where our society is at right now, speech is something that is showing up. And then you look at the increase of autism, which speech connects to, of course. Um, so we're definitely, it's definitely something that we say, this is the trend, we've got to address it before it becomes a situation. Yeah. And just speaking on, on just really quick on that one, so our ED trend, is, is, is this is very similar um, so this year we w we were able to get in we have two school psychology interns so it's people that we get in and then hopefully they love us so much that they want to stay which they're great um, and so that team is able to grow and we're able to really kind of pipeline and grow our own people that want to stay here they can become invested in our kids um, and so that, that, so that team itself has grown. We also were able, so you saw the autism, autism behavior a lot of times come, will kind of connect. We also were able to take our homebound position um, and because of our current caseload, we brought in, we switched around somebody that is an autism specialist. And so when she is not seeing homebound kids, she's in classrooms helping gen ed teachers address behaviors of our high functioning autistic students. So we're just trying, again, trying to jump in front of the trends. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. All right. At this time, we are going to go into closed session um, as permitted by Texas Governance Code Section 551.01.